Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Hands On SAP Dev uh, live stream with me, Cubacro DJ. Uh, it's Friday morning, 29th of February. Uh, what's an exciting, uh, exciting day. Yes, so um, great to have you on board today. Uh, what's going on? What am I doing? I've got some coffee. Uh, I've got some chocolate as well. I thought I'd treat myself to. Uh, I thought I, <laughs> I've just installed uh in the background on that little thing over there uh c matrix because i thought that was quite cool to have in the background it might be a little bit distracting if it's distracting let me know uh good morning to the live chat people um what's going on here why can't i see the um let me just make that a little bit bigger again live chat uh is a live chat working by the way pop out shall we pop out the chat uh there we are good morning ah that's why i can't see it let me just uh, pop that back in again how do i pop that back in uh don't know howdy good morning ah okay i can see the chat down here then i'll move that uh, in fact i can move that back up there um and i can get rid of Th uh, thank you andrew for uh letting other people know as well and all the people for retweeting and everything i'll get rid of that tweet deck now brilliant brilliant hello regulars yes andrew hello helmet hello robertino hello leo jorge pierre manuel that's fantastic. What's that uh, little arrow mean there? Uh, I don't know. Right, brilliant. Welcome to live chat and welcome to Hands on SAP Dev. Um, got some coffee, yes. Brilliant. Um, so what are we going to cover today? Well, we're going to cover some workflow stuff. Um, uh, I, uh, I, I've been, you know, as we know, the last couple of... Um, morning, Freddie, and morning, Mahesh, and morning, Christian, and morning, Volker. Morgan. Um, I like your Morgan, Volker. Very good. Very good. Reminds me of uh, old times. Um, yeah, we had the last couple of episodes, we looked at uh, our little hands on ICP dev API, which, you know, I've not forgotten. I do want to come back to that and carry on. But I thought rather than... I, I don't know. Let me know in the chat. Good morning, Ronnie. Let me know in the chat. Um whether you prefer whether you have any strong preference towards you know a consistent sort of you know episodes this uh, n n plus one n plus two n plus three n plus four and so on on a certain topic or whether you like it to be mixed up a little bit like we're doing right now i'm trying a little mix it up a little bit um and to cover something that's uh it's actually been on my mind for a while and i'll tell you why shortly that's workflow on cloud foundry Okay, so that's what we're going to look at today. Um, when I tweeted that, actually, uh, Ronnie, you uh, you seemed quite uh, pleased with that. Is that something you're starting to look at? Uh, let me know. Let me know. Anyway, let me move to the um, uh, where are we? Let me move to the uh, main scene. And I, I did like this, uh, you know, the Google Doodle today, uh, showing a beautiful uh, illustration from Alice in Wonderland. And it's uh, basically representing Sir John Tenniel. I, I think that's how you pronounce it, Sir John Tenniel or John, John Tenniel, Tenniel's 200th birthday. So that's a nice round number. It's on a nice date, 29th of February. And um, I did have a quick look. And basically, it, it was an illustrator. Uh, in the sort of uh, late 19th, early 20th century. And of course, illustrated uh, Alice in Wonderland. And I just clicked through, um, this is nothing to do with uh, hands on ICP dev technical stuff, but I did click through and I saw this beautiful uh, oil painting um, by John Tenniel, uh, a conspiracy. And it reminded me, I don't know how many other people have seen this, it reminded me of uh, a really nice Tumblr blog called Classic Programmer Paintings, where people sort of take paintings like this, you know, uh, and put a little alternative title to it um, relating to programming and, and DevOps and so on. Uh, so if you're not aware of that, I thought I'd share, well, share that with you today. It's, it's uh, quite nice. Uh, so um, you'll see what I mean when I, when I show you this classic Classic programmer paintings, there we go. Um, painters and hackers, nothing in common whatsoever, but this is software engineering as depicted by artists through history. So um, here we go. There's there's a, cla uh, a classic example, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, sysadmins entering the Docker convention floor. I'm gonna scroll through quickly 
um, and have a quick look at, oh, well, this is a classic, right? Richard Stallman introducing GNU in 1983, according to Richard Stallman. Um, or, for example, um, uh, staff developer and the laughing project manager. Uh, it's, you know, it's sort of quite nice delivering a feature in the time of a code freeze. Um, what else is there? Uh, oh, yes, team lead learns that the project will, will be shut down. Uh, I quite like that. Um, I think I submitted a couple of, uh, of these to the Tumblr site. Um, I can't remember what they were, but yeah, it's, a, it's quite a nice little sort of fun thing. I'll just paste that in the link there down below. Um, so, ah, Ronnie, okay, so you're, uh, so you're trying to find time to get into it. Workflow is such a powerful tool for process enhancements. Business process, that is. Yes, Andrew, yeah, it is, it is fantastic, isn't it? Um, I really like it. Uh, I wonder, I'll, I'll see if I can find, uh, yeah, this cookie thing. I'll see if I can find my, um, my contributions after the live stream finishes. Uh, so yeah, um, have a look at that. Sort of, a, you know, a nice mixture of things. Anyway, 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 anyway. Uh, the only other thing I wanted to share uh, was, uh, it's, I think, I just, oh, that's not right, is it recap? Uh, rec oh, was it recap conf? Uh, sorry, yes, recap conf. Um, uh, da -da 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 -da. I think, um, yes, basically, uh, today is the last day, and it closes at uh, 1400 hours uh, Central European time. Uh, it's the last day for both registration and uh, the call for papers. So, you know, get your registration in there, get your call for get your uh, session submission in there. Uh, very, very uh, important. Uh, awesome stickers, by the way, designed by uh, Mr. Christian uh, Braukmuller himself. Uh, so yeah, and those are those have just arrived as well in uh, Christian's place. So we're looking forward to sort of uh, being able to distribute those uh, at the conference. So there we go. It's eight oh seven. Uh, I'm going to get started. So Ronnie, yes. Um, so was it specifically? I mean, you know. Uh, oh, good morning, Max. I didn't see you there. Good, good morning. Good morning. Um, I uh, I'm not sure whether your excitement for this episode, Ronnie, was relating to the fact that it was on Cloud Foundry or relating to the fact that it was workflow in general. Um, uh, of course, we we um, we know that uh, workflow has been available for a while, or workflow service facilities on the Neo environment. Is it in the Neo environment or on the Neo environment? On the Neo platform, in the Neo environment, on SAP Cloud Platform for a while. Um, and it's now been available for you know a sh fairly short time on Cloud Foundry, uh, and so uh, of course you know it's 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 intriguing to have a look at that and get get to grips with it. Um, oh, good morning, uh, Greg. Greg, good morning. Good morning. Will the recap stream? Uh, oh, um, I I don't know. I think we're planning to. Um, stream the recap but Falker is on the chat as well I'm sure Falker can answer uh, better than I can um, okay so you're interested in Cloud Foundry and workflow in general perfect uh, the workflow the workflow service I, I really like the workflow service we've covered some of the workflow service before in previous live streams um, so there's stuff there I think I, I did a workflow um, live stream when I was uh doing a code jam i think robert uh robert dino i was there where was i i can't remember was it in Eindhoven? uh i don't know i can't remember uh, done so many um anyway i'm getting old um yes we're going to try and live stream all sessions thank you for answering Falker. so uh let me um start by showing us you know getting us all to have a look at where we want to end up at uh, on this little journey that we're about to take and we might not finish it all today but that i think this is because there's a lot to unpack um workflow on cloud foundry not that it's super complex i mean it's more complex than it is uh, with neo but that's because, of course, we're moving, and these are my words, uh, we're moving from something that is um, bundled up for you, 
maybe a little bit more monolithic compared to uh, what we have in Cloud Foundry, which is a lot of services working together in, in harmony. Uh, and so there's, a, there's, a, there's more moving parts that we are exposed to. I think that's the, that's the best, uh, uh, best way. Oh, yes, of course, it was, ah, yes, I remember um, it was innovation and uh, there was, a, oh, what was the other company called beginning with Q, Q, not Qubit, Ooh, I don't know. Well, my brain's not working, I need some more coffee. I apologize. Um, uh, I was very well looked after uh, by Robert and uh, Wim and so on. Uh, fantastic. Okay. Yes. Great. It is great news for travel impaired and also, you know, um, uh, for, you know, those uh, time zone impaired people. Is that a thing? Anyway. Uh, anyway. 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 Let me stop. Let me stop here and go to, let's go to the cloud platform cockpit. So I think the, the thing, the cool thing to do maybe is to, have a brief look, so two minutes, at what I have got from the past uh, from a workflow perspective <clears throat> in my Neo environment, okay? So this is the Cloud Platform Trial sort of landing page. And down here at the bottom, you can still access Neo Trial. So I'm gonna go in there and show you where we wanna, you know, show you where we wanna get to with uh, workflow on Cloud Foundry. So there, I've got my services list here, which I'm sure we're all familiar with, and we've covered this before. Um, I'm going to scroll down rather than search for it. There's the workflow service. And this is something I've previously configured. I'm going to have a chunk of chocolate now. Matrix is still um, working away there in the background. That, by the way, is the um, hmm, is the a very old ISO L365 monitor that I bought in Germany. And it's so old that when I bought it, it cost 465 Deutschmarks. That's how old it is, and it's still as good as new. It's fantastic. And it's my little editing station. When I want to break from here, I go over there. There's no mouse. It's just terminal. And I SSH into this machine here, or this the container on this VM on this Chrome OS box. I'm carrying on editing with uh, Tmux and Vim and everything. It's wonderful. Anyway, OK, Freddie, have a great day at school. Work hard. Bye, Freddie. Um, and um, I'll see you on the weekend. In fact, I'll see you tomorrow when I beat you at go-karting again. Yes. Ah. Um, uh, that's not what uncles are supposed to say, is it? Anyway. Um, so this is, uh, I think, something we're familiar with, which is the, uh, the, the standard workflow tiles. We've got the My Inbox, which is, of course, where I can access tasks that I've been assigned to or have been assigned to me in the sort of workflow with user tasks. Um, and this this pair of tiles here is basically two views or two ways into the same uh, rather beautiful, beautifully written um, uh, UI5 Fury application. Uh, monitor the monitor application, so monitor workflow definitions and monitor monitor workflow instances. I've said in the past, and I'll say it again: if you want an example of how to approach writing something that has different views, different angles, different personalities but it's and it's sort of intermingled as well this is a great example i love the way they've written this um it's on dj it is on freddie yes okay so here's an example of some workflow definitions and we can you know for example start uh start an instance start a new instance of workflow one i've no idea what workflow one is but i'll come back to that, actually I, I think of this idea this morning start an instance um let's show the instances um Let's just refresh this. Oh, what's going on here? Or did it, did it, oh, there we go. There, it's running. Yep, there we go. Erroneous running. I have no idea what this instance does. Retrieve product data. These are things from a long time ago that I defined. Okay. And I'll come back to that sort of concept uh, later. Anyway, so that's where we want to get to. Okay. Um, but on Cloud Foundry. So... Um, Yes, Greg, nice, nicely pointed out. Uh, DMBTR is still in BSEG, uh, speaking, of, speaking of Deutschmarks. So can anybody say, I mean, Greg, uh, don't put it if you know already, but uh, can anybody say in the chat what DMBTR uh, stands for? Maybe, maybe, maybe not our hands-on SAP dev friends in Germany, but um, uh, yes. Uh, ah, yes, um, I do, 
I, I will check, actually. Yeah, I've got it in my account. But I think there's no... You, um, so Volker is asking about uh, BizApp Studio, which I've got up here, but this is, as you can see, maybe this is what triggered. But I'm using, uh, there at the moment, I'm using like an internal uh, sort of uh, canary thing. Uh, however, I think, Ronnie, you had a conversation with uh, Karen on Twitter yesterday, didn't you? Uh, where the trial has ended, and I think it's March, as in tomorrow, or Monday, I don't know, 2nd of March, that the um, uh, the business uh, biz app studio business application studio will be available in trial. So I think that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Ronnie. Yes. So uh, yeah, a little bit of a hiatus between when trial while trial has been sort of in the in the in the pre GA stage, but it should be available uh, as of Monday next week. So we'll look out for that. Um, and in fact. Uh, we may look at workflow on uh, the App Studio uh, another time. Anyway, 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 anyway. So that's what where we want to get to. But instead, let's try and get to that. Um, yes, Falco, no comments. Um, uh, let's try to get to that through Cloud Foundry. Okay. What I've done just to save a little bit of time. Uh, I didn't want to do too many things in advance. Um, but I've got my Cloud Foundry organization set up and connected to my sub account. This is a regular, uh, you know, trial uh, sub account. Uh, it's in uh, EU10, which is uh, the AWS hyperscaler in Frankfurt, and I've got a dev space. So this is this is basically, you know, a completely fresh setup. Um, so you get your dev space and you get your trial uh, organization connected, uh, and all I've done so far is I've created an instance of the workflow service, okay? In the same sort of way that you would enable the service on uh, Neo, I've created an instance of the workflow service. How did I do that? Well, went to the service marketplace, which is a, almost like the equivalent of the services list we saw just before on Neo. And um, uh, I found the workflow service, is a workflow, there we go, there, and um, the way that you sort of enable, let's let's use the Neo term for now, the way that you enable a service is you create an instance of it. This is Cloud Foundry after all. And uh, you know, one of the one of the fundamental concepts of Cloud Foundry is that you have applications and you have services, but in order to actually make use of a service, you create an instance of that service. Uh, and also an application may want to partake of that service instance. So there's bindings between applications and service instances. Okay. So Here's the overview of the workflow service. There are service plans available, uh, you know, production style service plans, but also in trial, there are trial style service plans. Uh, and there's a service plan available to you, to us all on uh, trial, which is called Light. Um, I'm sure there is there are some restrictions somewhere. I don't know what the restrictions are, to be honest. Um, but, you know, I've not hit any restrictions myself in all the messing around I've been doing. But as you can see over here, we've got this instances um, uh, menu item, and um, that. Uh, let me just move over here a second. Yeah, that. Uh, well, that's, that's more distracting. That uh, is where I use new instance to create a new instance. Uh, is a little bit of a wizard, but you don't say any. You don't have to specify anything apart from the name of the instance. Okay, and that will that will be important shortly. So I chose. You know, naming is hard, right? I chose for the name of the instance, the name workflow. Okay, why not? Okay, so that's the workflow instance that's been created. So if I go back now to my uh, dev space and look at the service instances, that's why we see in there a service instance called workflow of the service workflow, the workflow service in the marketplace with the light plan, uh, there are no applications referenced, as in there's no service bindings between applications and so on. So that's so far so good, okay? Um, oh, lots of chat. Here we go. Um, ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Yes, it's not available. Yes, it appears. So thank you for checking as well. Not available in the trial account yet. Should be next week. Good morning, Douglas. Um, yes, Christian, I do like the DMBTRPL name. Uh, ah, bonus question in the exams. Has anybody, does anybody know what the DMBTR stands for? Deutschmark Betrag, uh, Deutschmark Amount, 
as in local currency amount, I guess, you know, that sort of thing. Um, but there are some beautiful, I mean, maybe we'll, we'll sort of have a poll of, you know, what our favorite five character SAP field name is. You know, I do like these five character fields, all these long, super long field names that are really descriptive. I don't like those, you know, give me the five character ones every time. Thank you very much. Uh, ah, okay, that was a good, that was a good guess, Andrew. That was a good guess. Betrag, yes. A Deutschmark Beleg Transaktion R. Transaktion R. Uh, but no, yes, Betrag. Um, very good. Very good, very good, very good. Okay, so um, so that is all I've done. Well, in fact, uh, what I've also done at, not at the space level, but at the organization level, the sub-account organization level, is I've also created a role collection okay so in order to create a role collection with roles that are related to workflow i had to create the workflow service okay uh, the service instance um so that's the, the part of the reason why i did it in this order so i created the workflow instance uh, and then i've gone into here i create a role collection which is i've also called it workflow why not you know call everything the same um, and if we have a look in that workflow uh role collection we've got a number of roles Workflow admin, developer, initiator, participant, and viewer. Okay, it's a similar sort of thing. You know, you assign yourself to the, the, the equivalent roles in Neo. This is what you do here. Um, and the application identifier refers effectively to that sort of workflow instance. And you know, we get it in a, in, a, in, a, in a dialogue pop up choice. So it's very easy to do. And then the final thing that I've done is I've gone in uh, also within the security uh, area here, I've gone into trust configuration. Um, and again, this is completely default. This is all set up for you when you you know you set up your trial account. Um, I've gone into the only uh, trust uh, identity provider that I've, that I've got here, which is the SAP ID service. And I it entered my email address, which was associated with this trial account, and added, assigned that new role collection okay so all i've done so far is created an instance of the workflow service and created a role collection with all those roles in it okay there are more workflow roles than you saw there that, the list of five but those are the ones that you would normally need uh, so you can you know administer uh, you can develop you can instantiate uh, workflow instances of a workflow definition and so on and you can also be a participant you can receive workflow user tasks and so on. So in order to do that sort of thing, you know, yourself in a trial account, so you were there in the trial account, you know, it's good to give yourself all those. Uh, okay, Robert, have a great uh, Friday. It's great to see you. Thanks for popping in. That's really good. Uh, and uh, see you next time, definitely. So I've done that as well. Okay, so, so far, so good. Uh, you know, assign role collection. And um, at the moment, there's no other role collections that I've got that I haven't assigned to myself. I've assigned business rules as well. So, the next question is, well, how do we get, you know, what's the next step we need to take to get to that nice three tile display where we have the my inbox and the monitor workflow definitions and the monitor workflow instances? Well, instead of having it all done for you in a sort of black box somewhere, Neo, for some reason, spatially, my brain, Neo is over there. I don't know why, outside. In the, oh, it may be in the cloud, I don't know. Um, instead of doing that, uh, having that done for you, you sort of have to, uh, at least at this stage, build everything yourself. But it's it's quite straightforward. And um, for the purposes of the way I like to run these hands-on SAP dev sessions with you all, is it's quite educational. You know, it forces you to think about things that you might not otherwise think about. So. I'm going to go back to the uh, trial uh, um, organization and look at the spaces. And we can see that this space is pretty empty. There's only one service. There's no applications started or stopped. There's no applications. Uh, there's one service, and that's that service instance. There's no applications here. So what we're going to do, uh, yes, Neo, ah, yeah, Neo is in the board, which is hmm, over there. Yes. Uh, so maybe maybe that's what it is. You know, I'm thinking, oh yeah, just like like Mecca, uh, the mothership over there. Um, nice, nicely pointed out, Ronnie. 
So we can do this with a, a sample project that is set up for you that you can get access to in the SAP Web IDE. Now we've been talking about the um, uh, we've been talking about oh nice nicely put Andrew nice nicely done see what we did there. Um, we're talking about the application studio, which of course will be available next week. But the I'm going to use the uh, Web IDE for now. Uh, that's going to be available, for, you know, for uh, for uh, for a while yet. Uh, I don't know how long, um, but you know, it'll serve our purpose at least for today. So I'm going to go into the uh, the Web IDE because that's where this workflow tools setup project is. Okay, I want to show you that, uh, and that will take us through a really interesting sort of um, flow. Uh, I've got one there that I've just done before well, last week, whatever it was, but I'll close that away. I'm going to start from scratch. I put everything in my sideboard. I start from scratch. Um, and I'm going to go here to file new project from sample application. How many people do that? I mean, I used to do that when uh, the web ID was first, first around and there was these interesting sample applications, but I'd never have thought of going into it. However, there is this thing, workflow applications on SAP Fury Launchpad for Cloud Foundry brackets trial. Now, in fact, I could favor that, couldn't I? Um, what happened there? Is it gone? There. Um, now, that is a bit of a mouthful, but actually, it's super interesting. So I'm just going to accept the, uh, the uh, agreement here and bring it into my workspace. There we go. Uh, sorry, I'm just looking at the chat down here. Um, lovely, isn't it? What's lovely, Ronnie? Uh, the, um, the, uh, the, the, the little play on words from Andrew. I think that was very nice, yes. Uh, very good, very good. Uh, so um, we have this project now called sample.workflowtiles.mta.trial. I mean, th this... This uh, name sort of tells us a lot anyway, right? Sample, because it's from the application samples. Workflow tiles, okay? So it's to do with the tiles for workflow, tiles, Fury Launchpad tiles. It's a multi-target application and it's to do with trial, right? So let's have a look what's inside. We've got the Shea um, folder uh, here, directory. Why did I say folder? Directory, which is obviously related to WebID itself. So we'll ignore that for now. I do like to have, you know, show hidden files on because, um, you know, I just want to make sure I can see everything. Um, we've got two directories here, Workflow Tiles App Router and Workflow Tiles FLP. Okay, we'll come back to those. Um, and we've got an MTA YAML, which we'll have a look into in a second. And we've got this excess security as well. And that's it. Okay. If we have a look inside of Workflow Tiles App Router, we've got this Shea, we'll ignore, again, ignore this uh, Shea directory. We've got Git Ignore, we've got Package.json, and XSApp.json, and that's it, okay? And it turns out that, um, as the name suggests, this folder here within this multi-target application project, this little folder here, provides effectively a way in to the portal service application, okay? Now, um, how does it do that? Well, anybody who has been, for example, reading uh, my colleague Marius Obet's uh, Cloud Foundry fun series of blog posts, which is awesome, uh, that will know, for example, about the app router, and the app router is effectively the, the way and the entry point to Cloud Foundry applications. That's the way it's done on Cloud Foundry on SAP Cloud Platform. As you can see here, it's a it's a node module in the SAP namespace. Okay, uh, see you later. And uh, yeah, don't forget, folks, call for papers and registration for recap is ending today at 2 p.m. Uh, uh, European time. Uh, Western European time, I guess. Uh, works, calling. Okay, bye. Um, so this is the way in. Okay, so we've got this sort of app router. Uh, and the configuration for the app router is this thing here, which is super, super simple. Normally, you'll have you'll have in the, an app router configuration a number of routes, okay? And it, that that list of routes will be used by the app router to direct the incoming traffic, the web traffic from the browser, for example, from a user, to the right 
place to, for example, um, an HTML5 repository to bring up artifacts like, you know, HTML5 artifacts like JavaScript and HTML and CSS and UI5 and all that sort of stuff, or to a backend service, for example, if there's an OData service being consumed or whatever, okay? However, here, all we're doing is saying, well, just go to this location here, which is slash cp.portal, okay, which, you know, in the app router itself doesn't exist, but that will exist as a side effect of what we're going to look at next, okay? So anyway, that's, just leave that there for now. So that's all we have in the app router, okay? So it'll run on uh, node 8 or node 10 or above, um, and this single dependency, that's it, super simple. The workflow tiles FLP um, is a little bit more interesting. I mean, not that the app router is not interesting, but it's a little bit more involved, let's say. Uh, there's a readme here, which you can read later. It's actually definitely worth having a look at. Uh, it's in Markdown, uh, so it's great. You know, we can read it sort of whether it's rendered or not. But we're not going to read that together now. Uh, instead, we're just going to sort of fumble our way through and work out what things are just by sort of inferring, because that's, um, you know, I think that's that's a nice way to, to learn uh, as well. Uh, that's a nice way to learn by not reading the manual. Um, yeah, okay, I wasn't, maybe I did say that, I don't know. Um, but the thing is, okay, good morning, Phil. Uh, good evening to you, sir, as well. Uh, you know, don't worry about being late to the party. Uh, that's also, yeah, we're all well, thank you. I hope you're well too. Um, uh, Leo, oh, hi, Leo, yes. Um, interesting to see there are more sample apps. Only, uh, you only know the standard three, just unable to workflow editor to see these new ones. Yes, exactly. So in the, uh, thanks for pointing that out, actually, in the workflow editor, uh, in the if I go to preferences, for example, this is what you'll need to do. So I'm sure people know about this already. Um, there's, a, there's an extension um, called workflow editor, which I've enabled as well. And I've also... In my Cloud Foundry preferences, I think I've all already specified an endpoint to use. So that's my endpoint. That's my Cloud Foundry trial account on uh, EU10, AWS in Frankfurt. And I want to use this organization, the one we just looked at, which is this one here. Um, and I want to use the dev space. So that's all fine. That's what I've done there as well. Thank you, Leo, for pointing that out. Let's go back to the uh, editor perspective. The really interesting thing about this is that while this is a workflow project, look at at least, you know, this is, this is you know, not normative, okay, to use a word from the <clears throat> OData standards, you know, it's not, you know, doesn't say anything definitively, but it gives us a clue as to what this is and where it's come from. It's come from the portal team. This is a workflow project. Why does this come from the portal team? Because, of course, in order to get the tiles, you need a Fury Launchpad site, and the Fury Launchpad sites are enabled by, provided by, supported by the portal service. And this thing here um, is a really strange looking um, module name that's a sort of dependency requirement. It's in the SAP namespace again, Portal Cloud Foundry Content Deployer. Okay, so this, that gives us a clue that, hmm, okay, well, when this runs, Okay, when we when when uh, the deployment process kicks off this particular um, module here, it'll run the uh, npm start, which will call node dash dash harmony. I didn't know what that was. I looked that up. Of course, harmony is related to the different um, language levels of uh, ECMAScript or JavaScript. So basically, dash dash harmony means, uh, you know, in layman's terms, layperson's terms, um, you know, use ES6 and that sort of stuff. You know, support that support that stuff. So we can sort of ignore what harmony means for now, because we're all ES6 people, right? Um, uh, it runs this portal CF content deployer. Okay, so we'll we'll sort of you know suspend our uh, imagination for now. What's, what's, what's I'm looking for the phrase I'm looking for? We'll sort of you know leave it there for now. I just like sort of having clues as to what might be going on. Okay, um, and then if we look in here, we've got this extra super interesting looking portal site directory, which again tells us hmm, portal site, this is stuff for the portal site. Um, and there's a single file in here, I mean, there's this internationalization as well, um, which, okay, I, I've, you know, I've learned that we can sort of ignore internationalization for the purposes of understanding generally what's going on. I mean, we know roughly what's gonna go on with internationalization, it's gonna provide sort of multiple different language 
packs properties for different things, right? So let's ignore the I18N uh, directory for now and just have a look at the common data model. And magically, the Web IDE has uh, a built-in sort of custom support for that behind the scenes in the same way that it's got built-in support for uh, MTA files, which will work shortly. Behind the scenes, it's just a bit of JSON, okay? Um, we'll have a look at this detail a little bit later, but basically, if you have a look at this, you can see there's some catalog information in here. There's some group information in here. There's um, within the group, there's uh, information about ooh, three things, okay? One, two, three, three sort of stanzas, three records in this array here. And the visualization, I'm guessing that is, okay. Um, com.sap.bpm.monitor workflow, com.sap.bpm.monitor workflow, and cross.fnd.fiori.inbox. Uh, uh, Those sound very much like they could relate to directly one on one the three tiles that we want on our FLP site. And in fact, they are, okay? And, uh, and I did mention before that, you know, the, monitor, the workflow monitor app is a beautifully written app. And as you can see, it, and we, and it supports sort of the displaying of the definitions and displaying of the, uh, the instances. And the way these sort of two interlink is beautiful. And you can see, it's, a, it's basically the, the ID is the same. It's the same program. It's the same HTML5 app with UI5. So again, we'll sort of we'll go back to Launchpad Editor and see that sort of you know visually, okay, com.sup.bpm.monitor workflow, the same thing there, and uh, the Fury inbox, okay. So this looks like content um, that you know, given what the package.json is showing us, content definition that will be deployed to some portal site somewhere, right? Okay. Um, and if you remember, how many people here, how many folks here um, have set up a portal FLP site on the portal service on Neo? It's basically there's, there's a like a, a, a graphical UI that can go into this sort of admin panel. You can set up a new site. It's a, I'll say it's some type of your launchpad, and you go go into a catalog and you bring in these tiles. And you put them in there. This is effectively the equivalent of that. Um, so, okay, again, we'll stop sort of thinking there and dive into the next bit. So we're dipping our toe a little bit into each of these different things to understand what's going on. Because in one sense, I suppose, you know, all you want to do is download this app into your web IDE and bang, deploy it, and you've got your, um, you know, your workflow administration tiles there ready and you can carry on with workflow. That's fine. But why not enjoy the journey and have a look to see how things work? Because at least in my opinion, all this stuff that we're looking at right now is super useful to understand because, you know, as developers moving towards the Cloud Foundry environments and doing things there, this is all really interesting and important to understand and to know about, right? You know, how these things are done. Anyway, that's my excuse. Um, finally, well, not finally, penultimately, but most importantly, maybe, we're going to look in the uh, the MTA YAML file. So as we know, Cloud Foundry, you know, is, is for us a really nice way to get close to this sort of microservice-based architecture. You know, um, for those of you who've read the 12-factor app, um, manifesto or description, they're definitely worth reading there. In fact, is it, what's it called? Uh, 12, fac 12 factor something, the 12 factor app. If you've not read that, or at least stared at it a little bit, it's definitely worth reading. And Cloud Foundry sort of gives us the ability to sort of think in those terms and, and act and do and develop in those terms. Um, oh, lots of chat again. Amazing. Um, what's going on here? Uh, so, oh, Christian, now that it's getting interesting, you go. Well, you know, oh, what can I say? What can I say? But you can watch the recording, of course. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. It's Friday. could be worse to give it as much as possible. How are you? You're putting cloud, SAP Cloud Platform Portal on your to-do list. 
it's not already on there, Ronnie. Come on. Um, so the so Gregor, the interesting thing is that this CDM content delivery mechanism uh, is that what that refers to here seems to also be used by the back end systems to provide information to the central input. Yes. So super good observation there from Gregor. Um, we see this this um, content deployment mechanism in lots of different places, which is the reason why so I'm allowing myself to uh, dwell on it a little bit here because we'll see it again in other things in future live streams, I'm sure. Okay, I've not got anything planned, but you know, um, you know, these are all sort of made up on the spur of the moment. Um, uh, but it's definitely something we will see again, for sure. Uh, sorry, common data, yes, com ah, com yes, the common data model. Yes, exactly, the common data model here. Um, yes, and uh, the, but the content deployment mechanism is also something we'll see before. So yes, nice one, Gregor. Um, so let's have a look in the MTA YAML and notice that, you know, I'm resisting the urge right now to go into my terminal. I can see my terminal just below here. Uh, in fact, there it is, but I'm going to do all this in the web IDE because why not? Uh, it's nice and colorful. Uh, we may go to the terminal later if we get time. So let's have a look at this. Let's have a look at, uh, this first of all, using again, this sort of web IDE provided MTA editor, which is like you know a comfortable graphical thing. Um, I prefer actually to look at the, at the uh, YAML, uh, much to my colleague and friend Max's uh, disappointment. Sorry, Max. Um, uh, especially now, I've found a way to colorify YAML on the command line with bat instead of cat. I've used bat before, but my uh, other uh, friend and colleague uh, Vitaly reminded me there is bat as well. But anyway, let's, let's not go there. I was tempted to go and show you, but let's not go there. It's 841 already. Um, so an MTA generally is divided up into three sections. Okay, you've got the basic information. Okay, boring. Um, you've got modules, which are basically the, the things that will be deployed and end up um, it, the applications. Thing. They'll, they'll end up basically here. And then you have the resources upon which the modules depend, okay? So there's this relationship between modules and resources. And resources normally will, re or very commonly, will refer to instances of services, okay? And the act of deploying something with an MTA uh, content that describes these sorts of relationships will cause, amongst other things which I'll come to, will cause, um, bindings to be brought into being between the modules, between the applications and those service instances, okay? And as you can see, and we sort of, I mentioned this before, um, now we're in the Cloud Foundry land. Um, first of all, you know, the, the inner workings are more exposed to us as developers, which I think is great. But secondly, these inner workings are quite sort of separate and uh, you know, small pieces joined together. Um, Andrew, you're enjoying a 6.7 IPA already. Tell us what it is. Do you, are you on Untapped, by the way? Um, let us know what it is. I'd be interesting. Is it a is it a, uh, a classic sort of West Coast IPA, Northeast IPA, or is it a, you know a Pacific um, IPA? You know, sort of uh, sort of amazing hops down there. I don't know. Uh, can't remember where you are in uh, down under but uh, some amazingly fresh tropical hops but anyway uh, let's not get distracted uh, thank you andrew for uh, making me jealous um so basically these module these two modules here rely upon if we look at the app router for example if you scroll down here they require one two three there's four four things workflow tile and also the workflow tiles flp relies upon three things okay so Four things there, you can see that little scroll bar, and three things there, you can see that little, uh, that little scroll bar's not there. Um, oh, th thanks, Phil, for making it even worse. You're seeing my red wine. Maybe I'll have a beer after this. Maybe I'll have a beer during, because you know I'm in the Australian time zone right now, theoretically. Uh, anyway, I prefer to look at it um, uh, in the flesh, in the raw, naked, uh, because I think it makes a lot more sense. Okay, so these are the these are the basic parts of the MTA YAML, and then we've got the modules and we've got the resources. Okay, so let's expand the modules bit by bit. We've got um, we've got two modules in there. 
and we've got three, four resources. Okay, so if we have a look at this module here, the workflow tiles app router, that is of type. Okay, so the Cloud Foundry has a concept of um, a module type. <clears throat> that is an app router type. Okay, we'll sort of you know skip over that the details of that uh, for the purposes of demonstration right now. And where is that module? It's at the path workflow tiles app router, which is this directory here. Okay, parameters, yeah, boring, disk quota, memory, we'll just ignore those for now. But the important thing for us is that this app router module requires, um, requires four services or four service instances. It requires this thing called workflow tiles, HTML5 repo runtime. It reminds me of those awful long variable names, but anyway, we'll just, you know, Leave that for now. It requires portal resources workflow tiles. It requires UAA workflow tiles. It requires workflow workflow tiles. Now, what the heck are all these four things? Well, just by the way, um, the workflow tiles FLP requires three of those four. Okay, um, it doesn't require the HTML5 repo. Okay, so let's just uh, close that back up again. Now, if we look down here. We've got those four names, workflow tiles, HTML5 repo runtime, portal resources workflow uh, tiles, and UAA workflow tiles, and workflow workflow tiles. Now, there's a lot of words there, and it's you know it can be very, very sort of uh, uh, confusing or make you cross-eyed. So let's just take our time and have a look at what this actually means. Um, if we have a look at the first thing here, basically this thing refers to this name here. Okay, and this is the name of a resource. Let's have a look what that resource is all about. Well, first of all, what type of resource is it? It's, and this is a standard Cloud Foundry organization type. Okay, there are, you know, there are sort of SAP types as well as custom types, but they're standard types. And org.cloudfoundry.managed-service basically means that this is a service that, um, you know, effectively will be instantiated during the deployment process okay so it's a service that may or may not exist already or may, well, may not exist already so this will cause it uh, cause an instance of that service to be instantiated what service is going to be instantiated well the html5 apps repo service let's go and have a look at the service marketplace and come on html there we go HTML5 apps repo service. Okay, so this is a service in the marketplace that's available to me in my trial account. And effectively, what that means, if we have a look at that there, what that means is that a an instance of that service will be created for us when we do this deployment. Now, um, when we when I showed you the, the workflow instance that I created, I said I chose the light plan, and that was the only plan that was available to us. But actually, here there's a couple of different plans. So which service plan is gonna be used when this um, HTML5 apps repo service is instantiated? Well, if we have a look back in here, we've got that exact specification here, obviously otherwise it wouldn't work, right? App runtime. So that is gonna instantiate an instance of the HTML5 application repository service with the app runtime plan. Okay, so this is basically um, in the same way. Who remembers when we were messing around with uh, the what was it the workflow API or the business rules API in SAP API uh, API Hub? There is this concept. It's a classic concept of you know design time and runtime. And really, here we're not interested in putting any stuff into the application repository. Basically, the stuff where things are served from HTML5 wise. There, there, remember, there is an equivalent of that in Neo as well. So this is basically where um, HTML5 application uh, application artifacts live, okay, are written to and then are served from. We're not interested in this context in putting anything in there. We're interested in getting stuff out, serving stuff from, as in use this service plan to consume HTML5 applications stored already in the repository, okay? So notice we're not actually putting anything into the HTML5 application repository, we're pulling things out that are already there, okay? So, um, Xylem and Flum. Ooh, wow, okay, brilliant. 
I've not heard of them. Is that, uh, I'm, I'm assuming that is an answer to uh, <laughs> the beer question. Um, yes, another dual use three letter acronym. Yes, I, 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 I was thinking that as well, Gregor. Um, and Max, uh, yes, I think I think maybe when we talk about APIs, we, we should drink an IPA. Uh, I'm never going to let Max forget saying IPA when he meant to say API during a talk he was giving at SAP. Was it SAP Inside Track in uh, Riga? An awesome uh, event, by the way. Anyway, uh, it's 8.50. Okay. Um, yeah, I am going to take my time. You know, we're not going to, or maybe we will. Uh, we may not get to the tiles here, but we can do this next week. Okay. Uh, let, please let me know um, whether you like it or not, or whether you don't care. Put something in the chat to tell me whether this style and speed and detail um, is good or bad. Whether you prefer me to say da, ba, 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 bang, 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 and here it is, and let, you know, let's build some workflows, or you, you're okay with with uh, taking our time over this. Please let me know uh, in the chat. So that's that one there. Okay, so this is the workflow tiles HTML5 repo runtime. So basically, you can see there's a naming convention that the uh, the team inside of SAP who has built this have used. Um, you know, workflow tiles is the generic name for this project. So okay, let's prefix everything with workflow tiles, and then we're gonna you know postfix or suffix um, the name of the resource with effectively um, a combination of the service and the service plan. Right, so this is what it is. So that's going to get created. Now, what else have we got? We've got portal resources workflow tiles. So the portal resources workflow tiles is something very similar. Um, it's another managed service or Cloud Foundry managed service type, which basically means it will get instantiated. What service will get instantiated? The portal service. What service plan will be used when we're instantiating the portal service? The standard service plan, which is again available to us in trial, right? So uh, we won't look at that now because it's gonna be the same sort of thing. In a similar sort of way, we have UAA. Who knows what UAA stands for? User authentication and authorization, I guess. Um, yes, um, the UAA workflow tiles resource that is uh, required by uh, that, that both both uh, at router and the other workflow tiles FLP depend upon is basically the security mechanism that is sort of standard standard used in Cloud Foundry applications and services and so on. Um, oh, Hesh. Uh, ah, brilliant. Okay, thank you for the feedback, uh, Phil and Jorge and uh, Mahesh. Uh, yeah, you know what, Mahesh, that's a really good point. Uh, instead of learning blindly, we're getting to know how the stuff works. Yeah, and you know, I don't know, you know, of course I don't know anything, you know, I'm an idiot, right? Um, but with a little bit of um, curiosity, I think it, I think it makes it fun, but also, you know, you sort of, you can form theories and then try them out, try those theories out in practice and something doesn't work, and then you learn more things when something doesn't work, and you go, oh yeah, my understanding was slightly different or whatever. So yeah, cool, okay. Um, so, um, ba -ba -da -ba -da. yeah, the basic plumbing. Yes, exactly, this is the basic plumbing. I'm a plumber at heart, right? So this is gonna instantiate, you know, the pattern is sort of repeating now. This is gonna instantiate a managed service, Cloud Foundry. What service, XS UAA, what service plan, application, and ooh, there's another parameter, a path. Okay, so now, um, let's go back and just have a look for that service. Um, in fact, can, this is, I always forget to use this sort of breadcrummy thing. This is quite a nice way to do this, right? Um, authorization and trust management. I happen to know that that is the XS UAA service. Okay. Um, uh, ooh, rather than go anywhere else, can I show you that it is XS UAA? Uh, no, but if you looked at the tiles, it says XS UAA at the bottom, right? This is the, this is the, Authorization and Trust Management Service. And you can see there are you know, even more service plans available for this. And what was the service plan uh, used for the instantiation? The application service plan. So let's have a look what that means. Um, basically, um, it will allow authorization to happen. It will allow the authorization flow where um, I, as a user, am challenged 
uh, by the back end, it's got, I'll, get, I'll get user ID and password field. That will, that will uh, then be authenticated. Yes, the password's correct. A token will be generated, passed back to the application, all that sort of stuff that we covered a little bit when we were doing the uh, API calls in Cloud Foundry. We had to get this all off token and everything. We talked about different flows. We only looked at one flow, but maybe we'll look at the uh, the, the other flow where the, um, the the client program is not trusted. Okay, we, we, we did a flow where the client program was trusted, so we give you a user ID and password to the client program. Anyway, I'm digressing. So we're going to use the application service plan when we instantiate the XS UAA, right? And when you instantiate this XS UAA, you need to tell it stuff. Okay, you need to give it a little bit of help as to what it should be doing on your behalf. Because basically, again, this is all about sort of building services and applications and things from small pieces joined together, right? This is Cloud Foundry, this is microservices, 12 factor applications. So um, the this XS UAA service is the thing that will be providing uh, the authentication flow support. Okay, we'll maybe dig into that a little bit more on another live stream. But during the lifetime of an incoming request that's completely fresh, the service or the app router first of all will be asking the authentication service, "Oh, is this per is this request authorized? No, give me some authorization." And it will hit the XS UAA service. The XS UAA service will go and send the user ID and password fields in a form to the user, give me the password, all that stuff, right? So that you know is responsible for the authentication flows, whereas the portal service is responsible for you know providing the Fiori Launchpad site and all that stuff. And the and the XML5 repo runtime service is responsible for providing for serving basically, isn't it? It's, it's quite a quite a simple service for, for providing. Um, HTTP uh, responses to requests for HTML5 artifacts, right? And the final service, but the only the most important service, of course, is we've almost forgotten, is uh, the workflow service, right? So if we have a look here, the, where is it here? Workflow, the workflow service with a service plan of lights. Now we've already instantiated the workflow service, haven't we? I'll show you right that, that right at the start, okay? So we need to do something here to say, oh, don't try and create a new one because we've already got one. And also we've already got one and we gave it the name workflow, okay? Not workflow underscore workflow tires. I sort of deliberately created it with the name workflow, A, because it's easy to remember, and B, because I didn't want to, uh, you know, preempt any of this stuff. And C, I wanted to cause a problem that we had to solve by changing something in the MTA YAML file. I, I forgot actually, to, I, I wanted to have a quick look again at this excess security thing, just to sort of see it, to stare at it for a couple of seconds. Where is that? Well, it tells us the path is in the current directory, excess security. There it is there. Let's have a look at that. Okay. How many people here, anybody here already has already manually instantiated uh, an instance? I don't like saying instantiated an instance, created an instance of the excess UAA service. Most likely you will have provided, let's do it now actually, um is this the uh yeah let's do this instances right if we say new instance of the xs uaa service right you'll see this sort of little uh, wizard thing here with a few steps i'm sure you've seen this before um i'm going to choose the application service plan which is what we want then we'll go through here and then you will normally provide either a file a json file to upload it or you know in, in the raw here, paste it straight in or type it straight in. You'll provide some JSON, which will configure or which will tell the XS UAA service how to behave on your behalf, right? So I'm going to cancel that and create this service. That is this thing here. Um, and of course, we're not going to do these things manually in the cockpit. We're going to do it through a deployment. Mm -hmm. So this is the thing that we need. And we'll look at the details of this another time. But basically, this is a regular almost like this is almost boilerplate. Um, every user has this UAA.user scope, and this is basically saying, you know, uh, use this user scope, authenticate the user and get the token back and blah, 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 right? Okay, Helmut, uh, thank you very thank you very much for joining, and Pierre as well. Oh my God, it's 8.59. So why don't we stop here? Rather than try and attempt to deploy this or build it first of all and deploy it, we want to take our time and enjoy that, enjoy that juicy goodness of all that stuff that 
you know, happens and can and may go wrong. Okay. So, um, yeah, 8.59. I hope you enjoyed that. I enjoyed that. Uh, it's Friday. Enjoy your beer, Andrew. And uh, do you use Untapped to check it in? Am I following you on Untapped? And enjoy your wine. Enjoy your coffee. I'm going to get another coffee now. I think you need the chocolate. Um, yeah, thanks for joining. And I'll see you uh, next week. Bye for now. <laughs>